<laughs> Thanks for the added boost there. Um, yeah. Is it in there? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> so my talk is a little less uh, professional, let's say, than some of the other talks, but I hope it's inspirational, at least getting you to think about the relationship between data analysis and games in general. So in particular, you'll find that I address games which help teach data analysis. But sort of in the bigger scope of things, it's the relationship between games and data analysis. And so <laughs> I was thinking about this, and this is my information if anybody's interested in looking me up and stalking me. Um, the uh, first question that comes to mind is how can data analysis be viewed as a game? Well, in the theoretical sense, anything can be viewed as a game, so it's a non-starter. Just give them the tools and let them play. Another question which is more interesting is how can we design video games to leverage human intelligence for generic data analysis? And by this, I mean humans, if they have anything to offer, is probably in the area of pattern recognition. And if we can leverage that in the use of video games, mapping problem domains from video games to real world data analysis problems, there might be something that humans have to offer. Let's hope. Of course, this is also a non-starter. It's way too big of a problem. Um, you would have to reimagine everything a little bit. So I stick with something simple. Um, how can we design games which teach people to become better data analysts and that are fun? Think Sudoku, because trivia is boring. Um, and for all my big ideas, um, I developed a theory of .NET, which is a very simple game. So all it is is two data streams, one on the left, one on the right. There are two distributions at the bottom, in this case normal and uniform, with their parameters. And you have to guess if the distributions are aligned to the data as they stream down or swap them if they're aligned, if they should be swapped. So these data points are generated from distributions in the random library within Python in the easy mode. We'll get to a hard mode in a moment. Um, the flag and the challenge in this case don't do anything in the easy mode. They're just in the hard mode. And so this is to help teach people distribution. So at the very basic level, in the easy mode, it, the idea is just to teach people, very novice people, distributions, probability, this kind of thing. So they can assess, for instance, which data is coming from which, which distribution, in this case simply by the high and low, the, this must be a swap because the uniform can't be generating the data points on the, on the right. But a novice might not know that. They have to figure that out. So as I said, line swap. The basic scoring is just um, if you, if you, um, if you make the correct guess with fewer data points shown, you get more points. And if you make correct guesses after making a number of consecutive guesses correct, you get more points. If you guess wrong or wait too long, then your game is over. And then the hard mode is a little more interesting from a Python perspective. Um, it functions in the same way, except that the distributions are taken automatically from the SciPy stats library. So in, print, in particular, because it's highly standardized with every distribution having either an RVS or an RV, having an RVS for, random, for generating random values or having a PMF or PDF for the probability distribution function and probability mass function, I'm able to 
figure out which parts of this library are distribution functions and then generate them automatically. So because it's automatic and not, they're not nicely named, so if work is to be further done in this area, then the parameter names need to change. So as I said, these are all highly standardized within this, the scipy.stats library. So two other things that the new, the hard interface had were these flag and challenge. And this is where challenge is where the more interesting numeric activity is going on. Flag is just to say, look, what you give me doesn't really, aren't really valid distributions. So the user I would ask to click that button if they thought the distributions were valid. This can happen, for instance, with the error long function. It doesn't error out if you pass it uh, float parameters, although it should, because it should only take integer values. So if you see something bad, click it. The challenge button lets people dispute that the distributions aren't far, aren't, the data is not different enough to make a valid distinction. So we're dealing with random data points generated from distributions. They could overlap. They could be totally misleading, right? So we don't know what we're gonna get. So if they happen to be too similar, you can press the challenge button. And what this does is finds the likelihood of each data stream given the distributions. And if it's actually flipped from what it should be or they're too similar, then we count it as a win for you guys, for the, for the user. Um, an implicit challenge just goes to the end and we don't cut off your game if, uh, if, if the challenge is valid. So um, as this develops, the important thing to ask is what is a good problem? Um, so in particular, if you're gonna have a hard, a good, a medium, and a hard mode for this simple game, how should you take user activity and determine what problems are good, what problems are hard, what problems are medium, and what problems are, are easy? Um, and I have a hypothesis for this. It's not yet implemented. But it's just that good ones are, or good hard problems are ones which users often get wrong, but for which a challenge would not be valid. Um, and logging these, these comparisons and then using those distributions for future games is sort of the next step, and it shouldn't be that difficult to do, in all honesty. Um, and playing this game, you find out that um, just distributions that are hard because you don't know them, distributions which you don't know, you can still sometimes guess based on the loc value uh, and then distributions that are distributions you know, but they can be similar, make the comparison difficult. So this is a very simple game, right? I mean, look at that game. It's very simple to do. It's, you can do it very easily. Any of you guys can program that if you have the idea and you want to do it. So this is more or less just saying, despite how simple this is, this is actually a very good game. It's very easy to do and you should do something similar and do it because it's really not that hard. All you need is Web2PY, but Web2Py, it provides me with the login ability for the users right out of the box, which allows me to keep their max scores and max consecutive in a row. Um, Python, you can, on the back end, I store everything in, in strings and 
execute it from the database, which is just a side note. And then SciPilot can do some cool things. And this simple, small form factor makes it nice for mobile devices. So that's my, that's my hard sell. And it's actually a, not a bad game. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. And you can play everywhere you go. And that's all I got. Let's thank the speaker. Are there any questions? Yep. Go over, again, go over again exactly what the game is. I had trouble following. Sure, sorry. So the game is, if you go to the web page, it starts, it'll display for you two distributions at the bottom. It will generate data points with a delay after each data point is generated. You have to decide whether if uniform belongs with the data points on the right or uniform belongs with data points on the left, and same with normal. If they're aligned, you hit collide. If they're, they should be swapped, then you swap them. Yeah? In one round of play, um, I want to see if I understand this correctly. That negative 5.54, would that move, or is that going to change? Yeah, once you, once you click aligned and swap, it goes to a new set of distributions, and, new, and the data, data points refresh and start from zeros. Yeah. So you, in, in one round of play, you'll see multiple data points? Yeah, so it'll start with, with two data points at the top, and then it'll go to two that It'll shift everything down and have another set of data points. And every time you wait, you score less points if you get it right. But, but um, it'll go to the end to five data points until you run out of time after the fifth data point is shown. And then it makes you use it. Yeah. So it's a very simple game. And if you're interested in learning the SciPy library, I'd recommend, stats library, I would recommend. Um, are there any other questions? Um, actually, I had a quick question. So is yep. it an intentional part of a test that you're showing two distributions so that one can choose the one that's easier to recognize? And then well, make there, it is, there is that. Um, and that does help with the, with, um, sorry, let me go to the, uh, wait, wrong one. How does this go? That does help with the hard, version because some of these you have no idea what they are so yeah if, if you recognize one matching to the other then then it's easy to guess both of them at the same time yeah but yeah right i'll do it where is it <laughs> nope, they're aligned. Correct, so I got a score of six because I let two go by, or three go by. Gamma in uniform, it has to be swapped. There are more than normal in uniform. Uh, this has to be aligned. <laughs> well, the first thing you want to check is to see if any of the values are out of range, right? So, for instance, with triangle and uniform, if um, if uh, with triangle and uniform, if the values are if one value from one of the columns is outside of the range of these, then it's it's in then it would be impossible for uniform to be that value. You understand what I'm saying? So the first thing to do is check the range. And then if you have something like normal, you can guess things that are highly improbable, right? 
So if it's 10 standard deviations away from the mean, it's not going to be, it's not going to work. So, yeah, this one I'm going to guess. Yeah, I was incorrect. Um, yeah, so I, I have thought of this. Um, my feeling is, one, it makes it di more difficult on mobile devices to sort of get it in the screen in a visible and nice format. The second thing is that um, real world uh, real world data doesn't come to you in nice plots, right? So if you want to be able to recognize distributions in real world data for discovery purposes, it might be a better idea to have intuitions on particular data points. But, um, but yeah, and you can see with hard, you get things that are, yeah, see yeah, this stuff is, most of you, anybody want to take a guess? All right. You're correct. Here long, this, sh this should be flagged. So I'm going with that. I'm going with that because it's loc. And then you get things like that, yeah. And that is a gen extreme value. So yeah, I have to write that in scientific notation. That's my bad. So that's the, that's the basic game. Um, and as it builds out, we'll actually put names to the parameters and put, um, uh, so you have an idea of what the parameters are rather than just two shape values. We'll also put things like skelom in the hard value and something else in the medium so that you don't have to deal with things that are totally obtuse. So. How people are playing this data and using it? Um, well, the data would be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, well, the random number generator behind the scene is, in this case, the psi pi stats library generator for each random distribution. Um, that's, you know, looking at user data and seeing how people perform and how good they are is, interesting and you can you can find out how good they are um, you can find out how good they are I'm realizing now um, that my break for difficulty might be a little too uh, too wide yeah any any more questions final questions okay let's thank the speaker